Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship at Trinity First United Methodist Church on the fourth Sunday of Lent. I'm so happy to see you here, and I congratulate you for being brave enough to look out your window this morning and conclude, yes, I can still go to church today. So <laughs> congratulations for that. You're brave. If you're a guest here, then I want to welcome you and give you the opportunity to reach in front of you in the pew. There's a card that you can fill out. Give us your name. Give us any contact information that you choose to. That helps us get to know you better. But we're glad you're here. If you're a first-time guest, we even have a gift for you. And we'd love to hand that to you personally. So see me after church or see one of our ushers and we'll make sure that you get that gift. But happy that all of you are here this day. If you have a prayer request, you can also put that on that same card. And in fact, tomorrow morning at 1015, Intercessory Prayer Group meets in my office and we'll pray for those requests. So write your request on the card, put it in the offering plate, and we will pray about those tomorrow. Today is also Encore Sunday, and that's one of those words that we throw around in Methodist circles. You may not know what that means. Encore is how United Methodists respond to natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, that kind of thing. And so when you give a dollar to Encore for a disaster, 100% of that dollar goes to the disaster. How can they do that, you might ask? Well, we can do that because on a day like today, Methodists all over the country, all over the world, I suppose, are taking a special offering today to help with the administrative costs. It, it costs administrative expenses to make that happen. And so the offering that we are collecting today, that you're free to place in the offering plate, just mark your check, whatever you want to go to Uncor. The, the offering that we're taking this, this day helps us be able to do that. So I pray that, you'll, that you will respond to that. A couple of other announcements in your worship bulletin. Prayer and fasting will meet again this Thursday and next Thursday. The last two opportunities you have to come, you sit in the sanctuary. It's a self-directed time of prayer, reflection, prayer, and fasting. And you're welcome to come Thursday at 11 o'clock. Our new board meets tomorrow for the first time. This is the inauguration of our brand new Simplified Board. So we'll meet together tomorrow at 5.30 in Trinity Hall, room 204. I want to remind you that the Kansas Wesleyan Choir will be here one week from tomorrow, one week away. I hope you'll come to the concert. It's a free concert at 7.30 a week from tomorrow, right here in the sanctuary. And it, I promise you, you're going to enjoy. This will be a fantastic evening of beautiful music. But we need 10 more host families. We have 10. 10 families have said we'll take a couple of college students home. But we need 10 more. And so if that's something that you can help us with, contact the church office. And by the way, we'll be contacting you this week. We need to get those, those 10 host families in place. I want to say a special thank you to Jose and Shauna Carmona. These are new people to our congregation. have been attending a few weeks. And they made a special donation to our day school garden. So thank you for that. And if anyone else would like to make a donation to the garden for the day school, please contact the office. Last announcement. So two weeks from today is Palm Sunday. Two weeks from today. And on that day, I will be baptizing and receiving brand new members. I'll also do that on Easter Sunday, three weeks from today. So if God has been speaking to you, and you know who you are, about taking that step of faith, of being baptized. Maybe you said, I've, I've been a Christian for many years, but I never was baptized. If God is speaking to you about that, now's your time. Come talk to me this week, and we will schedule you for Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday, the Sunday of your choice. Maybe you are a baptized Christian and you've never joined a local church. Or maybe you're a member of a church in another city, and it's time now to transfer your membership here. If that is the way God is leading you, talk to me this week. And we will make that happen. And it will be a beautiful thing. So, God bless you. There are other announcements waiting for you in your bulletin. I hope you'll have an opportunity to read those. But later, later, right now, let's quiet our spirits as we prepare our hearts for worship.
Holy God of love and light, we invite you now into our gathering. Come, Lord, take your rightful place in our midst, even in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to pay attention to you. Help us direct our praise and worship to you and for you. For it is in Christ's holy name we ask this. Amen.
We place this stone to remember that Lent is the time for prayer. When we pray, we invite God into our thoughts and into our day. We make space for God's words from Scripture to seep into our minds. Luke 11, 1 says, He was praying in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join in with the affirmation of faith. Now in the Lord. I believe in God, God our Father Almighty, Maker, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Bless this offering for our Lord, and may it help people in need, for that's what we're called to do. Bless each gift and giver, Lord. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.
actually, this is our second trip here. We, we were here in February, and then uh, we made a short trip to Brackettville, and then came back, and, and we've been working at Lydia Patterson Institute. So this is called, what's the name of the group you work with? This time, it was a, uh, a, a VIM trip from Nebraska. We met some other people from Nebraska there. And before that, the other time was... Well, actually, it was a drop-in from Nomads, yes. So basically, the idea is these folks live out of their trailer. They go around the country, and they are helpful. They've been helping at Lydia Patterson Institute which kind of makes me feel bad that I live this close to Lydia Patterson and I haven't done anything. And these people come from afar off and live in a trailer to help. Uh, tell, us, tell us your names again. Oh, Mike and Dorothy Astrigan. And we are so happy to have them. They're gonna be leaving us today, driving on these wet roads, and that's why I bring it up at this time. We're gonna pray for their safe travel. And tell us where you're going. Do you wanna? We're headed to Abilene to work in a Hispanic church here for a week. So, I think that we need to hold them in our prayers today. They're doing an awesome thing. Look, Kim, is it okay if we give you a round of applause? Because you're doing something. Thank you. Thank you. Every time I introduce myself to him or say good morning to him, I'd ask him, How are you doing? You know what he always answers? I'm huh. grateful. I ask him, How are you doing? He says, I'm grateful. Amen. Isn't it interesting how people who are grateful? give Amen. and serve. So thank you for that. Let's lift a prayer of blessing over their ministry this morning and also over their safe travels to Abilene and the work that they will do there. Let's also pray for the list, the printed list that's in your worship bulletin today. The new request is for Clinton McCombs and most of you know by now that Clinton fell and he is in White Acres Acute Care doing rehab. So let's lift Clinton up this week. I, I saw him this week. He looks great, but he's he's needing help with rehab. So let's pray for Clinton and Betty. Also, there is a special request from Pedro Romero. He is the pastor of our Spanish-speaking church. They meet while we're meeting here, and they've had a significant uh, family issue. And so let's pray for them today, for Pedro and Mayela and for David and Ruth, the whole family. Let's lift them in our prayers. Then, you know, Susan Driscoll just lost her husband in the fall. Well, this week, her sister's husband also died. And so uh, she has gone, uh, Susan Driscoll has gone to Florida to be there with her sister during the loss of her brother-in-law. So let's lift Susan in, in our prayers today. Then I want us to lift a, a prayer of thanks, of gratitude to all those who came and supported the Ida Maxwell family this week at the memorial service, and many of you helped in many different ways. But I want to thank George Norris, who is always here helping with uh, with funerals and memorial services, and he's here before you get here. He'll be here when you leave. He helps straighten things up. So thank you, George, for being helpful. And I want to thank all those who helped with the reception, and that includes Margie Davis, who sort of coordinated all of that and Jenna Johnson and Sandra Raibosa, and to John and Penny Eby who helped clean up. And there were others of you who brought food, so I just want to say thank you for the way that you helped us care for uh, the family of Ida Maxwell. And I know that you bring concerns in your heart this morning. Joys too. And so I invite you now as we go to the Lord in prayer to lift all of that to Him, the one who knows you best and loves you more than anyone. Let's pray to that one this morning. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we love and worship you this morning. The psalmist reminds us that your faithfulness lasts forever. It continues through all generations. And so we come this morning humbly in your presence, knowing that you invite us. How good it feels, Lord, to know that we come welcomed by you. So hear us, Lord, as all across this sanctuary this morning, we lift our silent prayers of praise and thanksgiving to you. I invite you in your own words, spend a moment in God's presence and just lift up to him your prayers of thanks.
And Lord, thank you for all of your grace that came looking for us, for your mercy that sustains us. Make us grateful people, O Lord. Lord, we bring to you our needs this morning. First of all, the need, the need of our of our of our spiritual life. And so we come before you confessing that we have fallen short, that we have missed the mark, that we have fallen short of your glory. And so hear us now, God, as we silently lift to you our our prayers of confession for our nation and for ourselves. Lord, we give you thanks for your grace and mercy. Lord, we also ask this morning for all of us on this Lenten journey to the cross. In these last few weeks, God, help us each one to continue examining ourselves, to continue repenting, but to invite you to do your work of renewal in our hearts, in our lives, in our relationships. God, we ask that you would be with those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. And there are many, many in this congregation and, and connected to this congregation who are in the process of grief. And so we ask, oh God, that you would be faithful and that you would call us, each one, to do the part we can play to reach out to others. May we, God, be your hands and feet of comfort and encouragement to others. Probably don't need us to say much. Help us refrain from comments that are not helpful. But help us use our hands and feet to be the body of Christ to those who are struggling and grieving this day. God, for those struggling with health issues, we pray for health and healing and strength for body and for soul. For those who are lonely and depressed today, and sometimes this weather, as seldom as we receive it here, can bring that out in people. So we ask, oh God, for your sustaining presence. And again, use us to encourage those around us. God, we pray for this new board that will begin tomorrow evening. Would you give us all the wisdom, all of the discretion, all of the creativity, all of the strength of purpose and vision that, that you would give to us, that we would be able as a board to lead the congregation, to chart out a pathway forward where your name will be praised and where people will be helped with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for all the ministries of this church, we pray, O oh God, for your spirit to anoint and empower May they not just be programs, but may your spirit anoint so that people's needs are met and people are drawn to healing and wholeness that comes through you. Anoint the ministries of this great church of God, we ask it. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the
Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 John 5, 18 through 20. We know that those who are born of God do not sin, but the one who is born of God protects them, and the evil one does not touch them. We know that we are God's children, and that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. This is the word, the word of God for the people of God. Yes, he is God. Thank you, Margie, for helping us with the reading of God's Word. Thank you to the choir. You always minister to us. And thank you so much for that. Scott, thank you for your music this morning. And thank you to all of you for your attendance here today. So I want to ask you, what is the most famous of all the Bible verses that you have read and known and heard? What's the most famous one? What would you say is the most famous one? Hey, I'm going to say it to you in Spanish. It's, it's so famous that I even learned it in Spanish when I was a missionary in Guatemala. I'm going to say, let's see if you recognize it, okay? We're testing your awesome powers of Spanish fluency, right? Si. It says this, Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo. Alfred sang it with me back there. She knows it. <laughs> amó al mundo. Que ha dado a su hijo unigénito. Para que todo aquel que en él cree no se pierda, mas tenga vida eterna. Juan 3, 16. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you're so bilingual. What is it? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. We love, we love that verse. I've even seen it, you know, someone shows up at NFL games and holds the sign up. John 3.16. We've known it since we were little. I, I memorized it in the King James Version. That's how old I am. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever, good news, whosoever is you too, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Hey, how about John 3.19? You know that one? See, we don't. We like the 16. God loves me. Awesome. But 19. John 3, 19. Not as well known. Don't remember memorizing that one in Bible school, but here's what 19 says. Life has come into the world. Amen. And people loved darkness rather than light. So I ask the question that's the sermon title, what's, what's got a grip on you this morning? I like the way that the text is translated in the message version. It says, we know that we are held firm by God. So, wonderful, God's grip holds us. We are held firm by God. It's only the people of the world who continue in the grip of the evil one. That's the phrase I want to put before us this morning. In the grip of the evil one. And I want to ask the question again. Who or what has a grip on our world? When you think about the world, whose grip? Well, we only have to turn to the, to the news to answer that. Did you know that this week, and I didn't know this, this week, a suicide bomber killed 10 people in Kabul on Friday in Afghanistan. I didn't know. 10 people who had mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and who had lives, 10 people are dead today. A bystander there said, this has become a part of our daily life. They've accepted this is just our life. That's an evil grip. Mm -hmm. 
But it's not just suicide bombers. What about in our own country? 42,000 opioid overdose deaths. That's, that's in a year. 42,000 overdose deaths by, by opioids. That comes down to 116 a day. And it's increasing in every, in every segment of population, men, women, it happens in every race. It's happening in adults of nearly every age group. That is an evil group. Human trafficking. I don't want to bum you out today, but we're talking about the grip of evil. And I have news for you. It's a strangulation grip. Human trafficking. We like to think that we've done away with slavery, but human trafficking is the new slavery. You say, yeah, but we, we don't support that. At the same time, Texas is in the top five states where human trafficking occurs. And Houston, Texas is, is the city in all of the United States where most trafficking occurs. Houston, Texas. It happens here in El Paso also. 25 million victims worldwide. In the United States, more than 50,000 people are victims 50,000 people in the country, victims of human trafficking. That is an evil grip, the grip of the evil one. The list goes on. Almost every day there's another allegation of sexual misconduct. And, and this sickening report where this U.S. Olympic team coach, this, uh, this physician for the U.S. Olympic team, by my count, it's over 150 girls and women who have come forward and said, he abused me too. Violence in our schools. How many school shootings have happened this year? Just since January, do you know? I didn't know. It's like, it's like more than 15, 18, I heard someone say. This year, already? Hasn't even been three months we've completed, and we're already over 15, 15 school shootings. One happened just this week. I didn't know. That shows you how sick it is that we have almost accepted that, yeah, it's going to happen. It doesn't even make news anymore. In Birmingham, Alabama, at Huffman High, this Wednesday, a 17-year-old girl was shot and killed, and I didn't even notice. Did you? Don't even remember it in the news. It's almost as if we have decided, yeah, that's just how it is. I submit to you this morning one more example of an evil grip on our society. All of this is, and I could go on. We, how much time do you have? We could go on down the list. And I'm not here to, to be, you know, But I'm here to say, 1 John 5, 19 says, We know that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Another version says, in the grip, in the grip of the evil one. What I want to remind you of today is that if you're a United Methodist, you promised that you would oppose this. When you join this church, and I will receive members on the 25th and on April 1st, and I will say to them, just like someone said to you when you join, will you reject evil? You promised you would if you joined the United Methodist Church. You promised that you would oppose. It's not enough to just say, yeah, one day Jesus will come and it'll all be better. You promised that in this life you would oppose the powers of darkness. How's that going for us? How's that going for you? All of this is out there, though. I want to talk about the end here. I want to ask us personally, who or what has a grip on you? How do we live in a twisted world where the grip of the evil one is so obvious? It's all around us. How are we to live in this kind of a world? 1 John 5, 19, Margie read it to us. It said, we know we are God's children. We know that we are God's children. We know that we are not under the grip of the evil one. Verse 18 says, we are safe 
and the evil one cannot harm us. If, now that's a big if, if we are truly part of the family of God, then we know that the evil one does not harm us. The text last Sunday was, greater is the one who is in you. Greater is the spirit in you than the one who is in the world. So we're not talking this morning, we're not talking about a dualism where there is a force of evil and a force of good and they are equal and opposite. It's not like a Star Wars thing. No, the scripture that I read says, greater is he who is in you. The spirit of God in you is far stronger, one of the translations said, far greater, far stronger than the spirit of evil that is in the world. So we don't leave this place today in fear. Where is he going to strike us next? Because we are part of the family of God and his power is greater. Someone should say, amen. amen. His power is greater. But I want to tell you, there are two families that the scripture speaks of. Uh, don't take my word for it. Research it yourself in 1 John chapter 5. Speaks of two families. The family of the children of God and the family who are the children of the devil. The scripture speaks clearly of two families. Someone said to me recently, well, pastor, aren't we all God's children? Aren't we? It's not what 1 John says. 1 John says, this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. I'm not making this up. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. And it says, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. A lack of love sort of puts you in one family or the other. So I want to ask you this morning, which family are you a part of? Which one? good news of the gospel, though, is that all of us are invited. This is not an exclusive country club deal where you have to have the right connections. You have to know the right person or pay the right amount. It's not like that at all. All of us have been invited. All of us have been invited to know him. Look at verse 20 of chapter 5. We know him, the scripture says. Now notice it doesn't say we know things about him. This is not a spiritual trivia question. We don't get into God's family by knowing facts about the Old and New Testament. We get in by knowing Him. That word know is a relational word. Mm -hmm. We get into God's family knowing Jesus. You say, Professor, how in the world am I going to do that? How am I going to know Jesus? You're going to get to know Jesus the same way you get to know anybody. The same way you get to know anybody, you're, it's going to cost you some time. You say, I don't have any time, Pastor. Well, then you're going to have a hard time knowing Jesus. Because getting to know Jesus, living in and with Jesus, is going to cost you some time. Just like every relationship costs you time. The relationships that aren't working in your life, some of those are because you haven't put the time in. And it's the same with our relationship with God. To be in relation, to know God through Jesus, it's going to cost us some time. Time to talk to Him. And listen, just like you do in every other relationship in life, you're going to know someone as you listen to them talk. And as you respond, as you talk to them, that will cost you some time. We call it prayer. And prayer is just talking and listening. It's going to require some time on your part to just be in God's presence. We call that meditation. You say, I thought that was Eastern religion. We meditate too. In his law, the scripture says, doth he meditate day and night for song. It's going to cost you some time studying. You said, Pastor, I haven't studied since I left high school. Well, welcome back to school. Life is school. <laughs> Amen. And Lamont says, life is forgiveness school. And it starts with forgiving me, myself. And then it goes to forgiving others. Life is school. And so it's going to cost you some time to be in relationship with Jesus. Time to study. Reading God's word. Meeting with other believers. Putting your knowledge together. Learning more and more about him by learning. And then it's going to cost you some time 
some, some hand and feet time. Being in a relationship is going to cost you some time. Just like when you're in a relationship with a neighbor, and then first thing you know, he wants you to help. He's going to load up a trailer, needs your help. Oh, man, I don't have time for that. But you go do it. Same with relationship with Jesus. When you are in relationship, it will cost you your time. You're going to do some things. You're on the hands and feet of Christ. You're going to, you're going to be prompted to do some things. Because that's how Jesus lived and we're following him. Amen. So, it's not really rocket science, is it? Knowing Jesus, the, the song that the choir just sang to us, Give me Jesus. Take the world, but give me Jesus. And if you really want Jesus, his arms are open wide. Amen. You won't get a busy signal, I guarantee you. Whenever you turn to him to study, to learn, to talk, to pray, to meditate, whenever you turn to him, he does the rest. He, he just scoops you up with open arms. Amen. And he will grow your relationship. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that part. He will be with you. He will grow that relationship. And you will know what it means to know him personally and to live with him in your everyday I want to ask you one more time, what's got a hold of you this morning? Is it the grip of the Father that sustains us through, through His Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit? Is that the grip that's supporting you this morning? Or are you in a stranglehold from the evil one? You see, it could be either way. But the good news of the gospel is that God has opened the door to every single one of us. No one is excluded. Everyone is invited to be sustained by his grip of grace. There's a book by that title by Charles Swindoll, The Grip of Grace, and it is open to you. Well, that's what I have to say this morning. <laughs> May, isn't it great when a preacher gets done with what he wants to say and then he just stops? <laughs> You're just wishing that happened five minutes ago. Right? <laughs> it, it is the truth. And may it be so in your life and in my life this day. Amen. Amen. And let's join together in our closing hymn as we turn to number 539. For the Spirit of the Living God, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's stand together and lift our voices together.
presence here today, that last line, till earth shall form one family by whom thy will is done. Maybe so. Would you receive this benediction today? May God bless you with his peace. May he make his face to shine upon you this day and in the days to come. Go in the peace of God. Go in the love of Jesus Christ. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Amen.